Hello, my name is Alexi Switz. Welcome to the first step in the Biomedical Engineering Department's Renishaw Raman Microscope Training. We will first begin with this brief video discussing the basic working principles of Raman spectroscopy. First, let's answer the question, what is Raman spectroscopy? Raman spectroscopy is a technique that uses the Raman effect to determine the composition and chemical structure of a material. Light interacts with the material in four main ways, reflection, transmission, absorption, and scattering. These interactions are shown here. For the purposes of Raman spectroscopy, we will focus on scattered light. The two types of scattered light relevant to Raman spectroscopy is Raman scattered and Rayleigh scattered light. The majority of scattered light will be Rayleigh scattered. This is light that is unchanged in energy from the original light source. This light has the same frequency and color as the incident light. When conducting Raman spectroscopy, this light needs to be filtered out. Approximately one part in 10 million parts of scattered light will be Raman scattered. This is light that has shifted in energy from the original energy. The frequency of the light is changed from the incident light. This frequency change occurs when the light interacts with molecular vibrations within the sample. The photons, or light particles, will actually exchange some of their energy with molecular vibrations in specific materials. Raman scattered light is broken down into two categories. It can either be Stokes or anti-Stokes. Anti-Stokes Raman scattered light is scattered light that gains energy from the atom or molecule. Anti-Stokes Raman scattering occurs when the molecule starts in a vibrationally excited state, moves to a virtual state, before finally relaxing to its ground state. We rarely use anti-Stokes Raman light as it is less intense than the Stokes. However, it does represent equivalent vibrational information of the molecule. Stokes Raman scattered light is scattered light that loses energy to the atom or molecule. Stokes Raman scattering occurs when the molecule moves from the ground state to a virtual state before dropping down to a higher energy vibrational state than it had originally. Stokes Raman scattering is more commonly measured in Raman spectroscopes. The mechanism of Raman scattering is like infrared absorption spectroscopy, but different selection rules apply. For Raman scattering to occur, a change in molecular polarizability is required during vibration. You will see some vibrations in the Raman spectrum, but not in the infrared spectrum, and vice versa. The Raman shift can be calculated by collecting and analyzing the Stokes Raman scattered light. This shift is the energy difference between the laser light and the scattered light. The shift will vary based on the frequency of vibration of atoms in a molecule. This shift allows us to determine the chemical and structural composition of a material by analyzing where the shifts or peaks occur. A Raman shift for polycaprolactone is shown here. The specific peaks allow us to identify this material as polycaprolactone. So how do we collect the Raman shift from a specific material? The answer is a device called a Raman spectrometer. The basic components of the Renishaw Raman spectrometer or Raman microscope are shown here. The laser, which is used as an excitation source for Raman scattering. The lenses that focus the light on the sample and collect the scattered light. The filter that purifies the re reflected signal and scattered light so that only Raman light is collected. The diffraction grating or prism that splits the light into different colors, and the detector that's able to detect weak light. Raman spectroscopes work by focusing the laser onto the sample, then collecting and filtering the scattered light. Specifically, the Rayleigh scattered light is filtered out. The light then passes through a diffraction grating and is collected on the detector. The machine is then able to process the data and create the Raman shift. Some common issues that occur during Raman spectroscopy are first, oversaturation of a sample. If the sample becomes oversaturated, the shift will show as a dashed line as seen here. 
To solve this issue, try reducing the duration of the reading or laser power. Some samples that have similar coloring to that of the laser will have oversaturation issues, even at low laser power and short readings. For these samples, Raman spectroscopy may not be the best characterization method. Another common issue is burning the sample with the laser. To solve this issue, try reducing the laser power or consider soaking the sample in water. This will help the heat energy from the laser to dissipate through the material and may prevent burning. The final common issue with Raman spectroscopy is the creation of noisy shifts. A noisy shift will have many little peaks. In order to reduce the amount of noise in the Raman shift, try increasing the laser power and duration of the reading if possible. It will more than likely take some trial and error to find the appropriate acquisition settings for your specific sample. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video. All information presented and summarized in this video can be found on Renishaw's website under their information about Raman spectroscopy section. I greatly encourage you to explore the Renishaw website. It has an incredible amount of information regarding Raman spectroscopy and Renishaw's Raman microscope. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email.